What is up everybody, it's Mad Libs, and that's right, it's time for another monthly Patreon video. This is one that I talked about a while ago and something that you guys have been begging me for ever since, which is how to advertise yourself as an artist. And this is gonna be fun, this script is already really fucking long, and there's not gonna be a lot of editing with this one, so get ready to listen to this in the background, as I'm sure a lot of you already do. Now before we get started, I wanna say two things. Number one, this advice is more focused on artists who plan to be more social media centered, and not really for artists who plan on doing galleries or museum-based things. I don't have experience in that sphere of the art community, so I can't really give advice there. And number two is that this video is not the end-all be-all of art advertising advice. I'm not an art god, and I don't know everything, so keep that in mind. This is all just tips and tricks and a couple strategies and advice. Nothing here is mandatory. And with all that said, let's get started on this video. This video is going to be split up into four sections. Number one is regular self-advertising. Number two is understanding and using the algorithm. Number three is bad advice you shouldn't listen to. And number four is things you should remember when taking all this advice into account. So let's get started. We'll start off with the basic, more community-centered stuff you can do without tactics or in-depth knowledge of anything. First things first, you're going to want to set up your profile, because your own profile is one of the easiest ways to self-advertise. For example, your profile picture, the thing that is constantly attached to you and everything you comment or post all over the internet. Make sure that your profile picture is an example of your own art. As tempting as it is to make it a shitpost picture or a meme, making it one of your best pieces or a good drawing of your persona is the best route to take. I can't tell you how many times I've found artists I like just by being impressed by their profile pictures in a comment or a post. It's easy, it's free, and advertises you all on its own. Also, if you have accounts on multiple social medias, try to have the same profile picture on all of them so people recognize you and you can start building your brand that way. All right, now that your profile picture is set up, let's move on to your actual posts. First things first, you should probably have some. Make sure that before you start doing any kind of big advertising that you actually have work to advertise because nothing is more deterring to people that wanna follow you than going to your profile and seeing that you have no work to show. Even if you're great, most people won't see a reason to follow you if you aren't posting anything. The amount of posts that are good to have really depends on what social media you're on. For example, on YouTube, having like four or five videos is probably a good start because videos take time to get through and give you a pretty good idea of the channel. Or on Twitter, you don't have to have all that many because, you know, they take up quite a bit of space on their own when you scroll. However, on something like Instagram, where the posts are all cut into tiny cubes, you might need a few more to make your profile look fleshed out. Make sure you take time to fit that to whatever site or social media you're using. And once you've got a decent amount of posts, it's time to put the best ones front and center. Now, once again, for places like Instagram, this is hard because all your posts are front and center, but for places like DeviantArt or Twitter or YouTube, it's a lot easier and it's something you should take the time to do. If you're on DeviantArt, make a collection of your best pieces or fan art or something that'll get you attention and put them on the front of your profile. If you're on YouTube, take your best or most relevant video that will get attention and put it on the front of your channel. If you're on Twitter, make your pinned tweet your best piece or a collection of your best pieces. This way you're putting your best foot forward when you make your profile. Be sure to update this kind of thing pretty often because I'm sure we all know how a drawing can go from amazing to absolute shit in our own eyes pretty quick. And the last touch for your profile is to give it a bit of a theme. Now I don't mean make all your posts one color or make all your tweets or thumbnails the same or one theme because I hate that advice. I mean give everything outside of your posts a theme. For example, make your profile picture and header image on Twitter or YouTube similar or make sure they complement each other. Or give those little story highlights on your Instagram a matching color scheme to your profile picture. Or if you're on Tumblr, you can give your whole blog a matching theme or color scheme with the editing your blog feature. This usually gives people who visit your profile a nice little, ooh, that's cool, reaction and can get them to stick around and look at your stuff a little longer. Another thing to do when making your profile is to keep your post types consistent. This is because if people see a drawing that you made and then they check out your profile and see only two drawings and 50 random posts about your cat or some stupid poggers memes, they're not going to follow you. And if people follow you without looking at your profile, they're most likely going to unfollow you once a post that's nothing like what they followed you for shows up in their feed. I mean, come on, we've all unfollowed people for posting too much shit that has nothing to do with why we followed. We know how that feels. Now, I'm not saying to post the same thing every single day or post the exact same type of thing, but try to make sure that what you post on your art account is relevant to your art, like posting works in progress or behind the scenes or really anything that's relevant to your art or whatever projects you're currently working on. This was advice that I personally ignored for the longest time. I thought I would be just fine if I posted whatever I wanted 
and just posted art when I made it. I thought I'd have a great art profile that way, some fucking how, but it doesn't work that way. Not only does it make people not want to follow you if they only like your art, it can make people not want to follow you if they only like your personal posts. And even if people say fuck it and they follow you anyways, then you're going to have a real hard time trying to figure out your audience, which is terrible if you want to advertise. Because you have to remember, you advertise to both your followers and the people who have never heard of you. So moral of the story is to keep your art and your personal posts separate. Make one account for art and another account for whatever else. Do not make the same mistake I did. All right, now that your profile's all set up, it's time to actually start promoting yourself. And before we get into the juicy strategies, let me give you a few small, easy tips that will really help you in the long run. And these little tips are all centered around one thing, interact with the art community. I know you've probably heard this a million times and you're tired of it, but it's true. The more things you comment on or like, the more people will see you. Just think about that thing I said earlier about finding artists with their profile pics. How do you think I saw them? They were commenting on stuff. And I'm sure that you, the person watching this video, yes, I can see you, quit sitting like this, it's bad for your back. I'm sure you've done the same thing. Followed somebody because something they said or their profile picture interested you. And if you're active in the community, people will start to notice you. Another way to get noticed easily is to follow smaller artists or artists that are around your size. Because again, I'm sure we've all gotten a notification that someone's following us and decide to go check out their profile out of curiosity. And smaller artists are more likely to look at your profile out of curiosity than huge artists who have hundreds of followers a day. Another thing you can do is participate in easy art challenges. You can do the usual draw this in your style, or if you want to find even easier ones where you can show off a lot of your art at one time, you can do the art versus the artist, or year in review, or one of those things where you just show off your progress. A lot of people like to look at those kind of things and follow the tags of art challenges, so this can get your art in front of a lot more people than you'd think. All right, now that we've got the easy stuff out of the way, let's get onto some more careful and strategic ways to self-promote. The first and one of the best ways is using groups and communities communities to your advantage. The first step of this is, obviously, to join groups and communities. This is a lot easier on DeviantArt because they have groups built in, but it isn't impossible for people who don't use that website. For example, you could join group chats or Discord servers for artists or things that you draw, like groups dedicated to certain fandoms, for horror art, or certain aesthetics like pastel or vaporwave. Remember, you do not have to stick to just one kind of group. You can branch out if you want. And once you've joined these groups, here's a few things to remember. Number one, do not spam. Even if you are there to advertise, don't be fucking annoying about it. Share your art at the appropriate places and times in these groups and talk to people. Ask for advice or criticism and talk about your interests. Number two, avoid huge groups. Your first instinct's probably gonna be to join a huge group or server. I mean, more members means more eyes on your art, right? Well, not really. In fact, it could mean even less eyes on your art. For example, you know when you join a big group chat and you try to start a conversation but nobody talks to you because like 50 messages just went flying by and nobody saw you? It's the same principle. So when joining groups or servers, don't just join the big ones. Find some smaller or medium-sized ones to shake things up. That way your work is gonna stand out more instead of just being another drop in the pond. All right, we've gone over your profile, interacting with the art community, groups, and before we move on to tackling the algorithm, let's do a quick flyby of general self-advertising advice. Number one, try to find places where self-promotion is encouraged. A great example is the artist supporting artists or artist support hashtags, which consists of posts where artists can promote themselves in the comments. There are other places that you can do this, like the groups or chats I just mentioned as well. You just gotta go out and try to find them. Two, when sharing your art in places like Discord servers or Reddit communities or groups or group chats, try to use links to a post of your work instead of just the photo of your work. This way, if people like your stuff, they can just go straight to whatever profile you link to and follow you there. And even if they don't follow you, whenever people use that link, it'll count as a view on your work and boost you just a little bit in the algorithm of whatever social media you're using. Number three, try to find your niche. Find whatever kind of specific communities you and your art already cater to, whether that's certain fandoms for fan art you make, horror lovers if you make dark art, uwu aesthetic people if you make pastel woo art, whatever. Figuring out what kind of audience likes your art can really help guide you through all of the other advice that I've given and will continue to give in this video. Number four, and this is kind of a hard one to deal with, the post that you like the most isn't always the one you should promote. It's a really hard pill to swallow, but it's true. I think we've all seen it in action. When you post something that you worked hours on just gets a few likes, but then a quick sketch that you didn't really spend time on gets way more. That's because everyone has different tastes than you, and the thing that you're the most proud of personally might not be the thing that the most people will like. So before you start spreading around certain drawings, try to remember that before you make that decision. All right, we've gone over the easy shit. Now it's time to go over an artist's greatest enemy online. 
the algorithm. And as much as the algorithm of most social medias fucking hates artists for no goddamn reason, it can be useful. If you learn enough about it, it can end up being your best friend. Well, maybe not your best friend. Maybe just that bitch at school that everybody uses because her dad's rich and she throws great birthday parties. But you know, she bullies you in school so you don't really feel too bad about using her. That kind of friend is more what the algorithm is. And I've got a bunch of little tips and tricks that not a lot of people talk about and I wish people had told me. Because the best way to self-advertise is by getting the already existing system to do it for you. And with all that in mind, let's get started. We're gonna start off with hashtags and properly tagging your work. And I'm gonna give you guys a nice little nugget of advice that I fucking wish somebody had given me when I was posting my art. And that is the first five hashtags you use are the only ones that really matter. Now the exact number might differ depending on whatever site or social media you're using, but the point still stands. When it comes to the algorithm, only the first few tags that you use really matter to it. You should still put more than three or five or whatever because people might look up those tags and find your art through them, but you always put the best ones first. The ones that have the most searches and posts, the ones that you know people will follow more often. The best tags need to be within the first five. Remember that because holy shit, that would have saved me so much time if I knew that before. All right, now that you got your first five tags, let's talk about the rest of them. Make sure that you aren't just tagging it with random stuff that applies to whatever you drew. Try to use tags that you think people are actually going to be searching for. Like if you drew a uh, Connor from Detroit Become Human, instead of tagging it with hashtag Detroit Become Human, hashtag DBH, hashtag Androids, hashtag PlayStation Games, tag it with stuff that people are going to search up, like hashtag Detroit Become Human fan art, or hashtag Detroit Become Human whatever character you drew, hashtag DBH fan art, hashtag DBH whatever character that is. Once again, things that people are actually going to search for when they want to find art like the kind you drew. Another type of tag that you can use to your advantage are community-based hashtags. Some common ones are hashtag artgram, hashtag artists of Instagram, hashtag artists on Twitter, ones that brand you as an artist and push you more into the online art community. After that, if you still have space, then you can just put whatever fucking tags you want in there. Speaking of all these tags, a quick thing to remember is to make sure you separate them from your caption. For example, doing this on Instagram. It just makes your captions look nicer, honestly. Speaking of captions, that's something else that I have advice for, which is try to put keywords in the captions of your work. Like if, again, you're drawing Connor from Detroit Become Human because he's amazing and I will fight anyone who says otherwise, instead of just captioning it with some blue hearts or something, you can put Connor or Detroit Become Human, Connor, or here's some fan art of Connor from Detroit Become Human. That way, if people are looking up any of those keywords and they're not using hashtags or they're just looking it up on Google or something, your art could pop up because you've used it in your caption and also your tags probably. All right, now that you've got your caption and your tags all set up, let's talk about when to post and how often. Something that the algorithm favors above all else is quantity and consistency over quality. Now, this doesn't mean you have to post all day every day and sacrifice your quality, but you should have a regular and consistent posting schedule no matter what social media you use. If you're posting somewhere like Instagram or Twitter, you can post works in progress or simple studies or sketches in between finished pieces. Remember to post as much as possible without burning yourself out or pushing yourself too hard. However often that is, is up to you. You know your work habits, you know your workflow, you know your schedule, you decide your post schedule. Another thing to remember is to post at the right time. As much as I know you'd like to share that amazing drawing you finished at 3 a.m., it wouldn't be a good idea to share it so late. Try to post in the afternoon or at least during the day when more people are online. And if you have a big enough audience, you can just check your statistics. This is on Instagram, I believe Twitter as well, and YouTube. There are certain sections that show things about your audience, and one of the things that they show is when they're most active. Try to figure out when your audience is most active and try to post within that window so more people will see your art. A big reason that you wanna do this is because a little rule that almost every single website and social media has is the more interaction you get in a smaller amount of time, the more your post will be boosted by the algorithm. So making sure that a lot of people see your posts right after they get posted is very important. And there are many ways to make sure that this happens. If you're on Instagram, a good way to do it is to post your drawing on your story. Or if you're in those groups I mentioned earlier, share your newest post in there as soon as you put it up. And I'm sure that you can come up with other ways to do this, like sharing it with friends if you're super proud of it or something like that. But all in all, just try to get your art in front of as many people as soon as possible so that the algorithm boosts it for you. Another thing that matters to the fucking holy algorithm that we all know about 
about is interaction on your posts, mostly in the form of shares and comments. That's why you see so many shitty Facebook and meme pages doing that. Type this word one letter at a time. 99% can't do it. Tag a friend. Share this. That's why they do that. It's also why so many art raffles or contests have like, follow, and comment as the requirement to be in the contest. Now, there are a lot of ways to actually try to get more comments and interact with your audience without being fucking annoying, like uh, asking simple questions about the art in the caption, or making your own artist supporting artist posts and get people advertising in your comment section. Again, this is something that you're gonna have to fit to your own needs and your own posts and your own art, but just remember to try to put things in the captions that would elicit a comment from somebody. Another thing that matters that not a lot of people know about is the amount of time that people spend looking at your post, which is again why so many shitty meme pages have multiple pictures on their posts and half of them are like and comment traps. Now this is obviously a pretty easy thing to do. You can post close-ups of your drawing as well as the piece in a little compilation. You can post compilations of your OCs or certain types of drawings that you do. And then hey, maybe you can throw in a which one is your favorite to get comments in the caption. Whew, that was a lot. And that's uh, all the hopefully helpful advice that I have for you guys. And now that we've got all that taken care of, let's move on to the shitty advice you should ignore and some things you should remember before you start carrying out any of this advice. Let's start off with roasting some of that shitty, shitty art advertising advice. Number one, do art trades or do raffles, do free commissions for self-promo. No, just no. Honestly, I hear this everywhere when young artists are asking for advertising advice, and it is the shittiest thing that you can tell them. Now, I've already talked about why do free commissions is fucking terrible in my video about shitty art advice, so I won't go over it all over here. I'll just do a lightning round of why these three pieces of advice are so terrible, because they're honestly all within the same ballpark. Number one, they take way too long to be worth it. I'm sure that we all know how long it takes to set up contests and raffles or do commissions or do art trades, and it really isn't worth the what? Five followers you're gonna get out of this? Two, you kind of have to have an audience to do a contest. Having a raffle or a contest with like three participants isn't gonna be very good advertising for you, now is it? And what are you gonna do for the prize? A commission? Because number three, free commissions are nothing but extra work and stress for often inexperienced artists. If you're small enough to be doing free commissions, you're too inexperienced to be doing any kind of commissions. Four, they don't fucking work. The only people that you're gonna get to do art trades or participate in raffles or take you up on your free commissions when you're just starting out are going to be artists around your size, which isn't exactly good advertising, at least not for the amount of effort that all of this is going to take. Now this advice, aside from the free commissions, is good if you want to have fun and get to know people in the art community. I'm not bashing it. I'm not saying like, don't ever do these things. If you want to do these for fun, go ahead. But just know it's not good for advertising. And I really wish the art community would stop holding it up as a saving grace to small artists who want to advertise themselves. All right, next piece of shitty advice. Advertise yourself in the comments. <sighs> I really hate that I have to actually fucking tell people that this is bad advice, but believe it or not, I've seen artists on Instagram and other social medias making advice posts on how to advertise yourself, telling people they should do this. They try to make it sound better with, oh, don't, well, don't beg people to follow you. Oh, d don't be annoying about it. Uh, just ask people politely to check you out. No, no. That shit's annoying no matter how you say it. And the fact that I've seen huge artists acting like it isn't is so, Stupid. It's the worst. Don't do this. People will ignore you and also probably block you. That is if your spam comment doesn't get immediately deleted because that's what I do to all those comments on my page. Next piece of advice, draw lots of fan art. Now this one isn't exactly bad advice. It can actually work pretty well if you need a boost in interactions on your page. And I'd be lying if I said I've never done it when I wanted a video to get a little more attention than normal. You know, just drawing some fan art and using it in the thumbnail to catch people's eyes. But this kind of thing is a slippery slope to becoming a fan artist, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. There's nothing wrong with making a career out of fan art if that's what you want to do. But some people don't want that. They don't want to be known for only fan art. They want to share their stories and their characters, and it's very very hard for fan artists to do that because people really only give a shit about their fan art and nothing else. So please take the draw lots of fan art advice with a grain of salt and do it in moderation if you don't want to be a fan artist or you only want a small boost. And that's all the shitty art advice that I really have to go over to make sure that you guys don't do because a lot of those are just a goddamn trap. And with all that out of the way, let's move on to the very last piece of sort of advice in this video, which is things to remember now that you have all of this advice at your disposal. 
First of all, remember not to spread yourself too thin. Don't have a profile on everything and try to update them all every single day. I used to do this and it was stressful and did not help me at all. Try to hone in on a couple or even a few social medias that you know you can handle. That's why I only use Twitter and Instagram outside of this YouTube channel. I shut down my DeviantArt, sorry if you follow me there, I'm never updating it again. And I only go on Tumblr every once in a while to reblog or like some stuff on my personal account because, uh, I still like Tumblr, okay? I'm sorry. It's a funny place. It's got the great art that I like. I, I still like Tumblr. Something else to remember is that you need to be patient. The internet's a wacky wild west of a place, and sometimes something you put like no effort into can blow the fuck up. I mean, my Steven Universe guessing videos blew up and they now both sit at a million views, and I only made those for fun and posted them on r slash Steven Universe and it only got like 15 upvotes. Cause that's how it is on this bitch of an earth sometimes. A lot of internet fame is dumb luck. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't put effort into advertising yourself, because it is way easier to run into some dumb luck when you're actually putting yourself out there. But but dumb luck and patience is still something to keep in mind. The final and most important thing, however, is do not let advertising or your audience dictate what you do. Obviously, you should go with some trends to boost yourself and listen to and respect your audience, but they are not the end-all be-all of you, your art, or your career. You are. You make those decisions. Just because something blows up doesn't mean you have to do that for the rest of your life or career. Again, my Steven Universe guessing videos blew the fuck up. I could have made like a hundred more of those and gotten millions of subs and views, but I didn't, because that's not what I want to do. I want to be an artist. And as much as I appreciate the attention those videos have got me, and I could not be more grateful for them for helping me get my foot in the door, they would not have made me happy for the rest of my life. And that's what you need to remember. Don't do things because they're going to make you popular. Do things because they're what you want to do. The tips and tricks and strategies in this video are not here to change the way you do things or make you do things in the way that I do them. They're here to boost you and for you to put your own spin on them and use them to your advantage and use them to help you do what you want to do. And with all that said, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. This is a way more formal, informative video than I'm used to doing, but you guys have been begging for it. And um, this was pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, shout out to my $1 patron, Raven, and shout out to my $5 patrons, which I'm showing on the screen. Thank you guys for your support. If you guys want previews for my videos, you wanna see them a day early, and if you wanna help suggest Patreon videos for each month and get your work up on the screen right here, just go you know, do $5 in that Patreon website right there. Uh, you don't have to, but I would greatly appreciate it. Honestly, just the fact that you're watching this is good enough for me. Uh, also, I have my link to my Discord server in the description. It's only going to be available for one hour, so get it while you can. If you don't get it this time, though, I put it in the comments of all my new videos, so just stick around next week. If you want to see more of my art, go to my Instagram, and if you want to see my art, but also me rambling about shit that doesn't really matter, you can go to my Twitter. And if you just want weird mini shit post videos, you can go to my second channel. I post there when I feel like it. Uh, pretty sure that's all I need to plug. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, definitely don't forget to subscribe and join the madness. See ya!